Hello everyone, this is the third part of this small project. This time we'll focus on the portal effect and the objective is to render something onto this plane and give the illusion that we're looking at a distant galaxy that we can walk into by entering the portal. We can't just paste the texture on it because we also want to react to the camera position and direction. And yeah, let's not waste any more time and dive straight into it. First thing we'll have to do is to create a new render target inside our portal component. Normally in WebGL, the place where we want to render 3D content is the screen itself. But sometimes it's useful to render something on an off-screen texture and then use that texture for other purposes later on. To simplify things, we could say that the WebGL render target class creates a texture that we can render into and that's where we're going to render the scene that sits inside the portal. And since this is a 3JS resource that lives outside of React Tree Fiber's scene graph, we also have to take care ourselves of screen resizes and to adjust the dimension of the render target when that happens. Now that we have a place that we can render things into, we need to determine what we'll render on it. So I'm creating here a scene in plain 3JS code, which again lives outside of React Tree Fiber. And to set a 360 background on it, we can assign a texture in the background property of the scene. You'll find the link to the texture as usual in the description of the video and to make sure that 3JS knows that it needs to interpret this texture as a 360 background we'll have to assign the equirectangular reflection mapping type on it. And now we need to draw our scene in the render target. The use frame hook will execute a callback on each frame and it will expose a variable called state that contains the WebGL renderer, which is the 3JS object that we can use to manually render something. React Tree Fiber normally takes care of this step for us in the background, but since these two objects live outside of React Tree Fiber land, we have to manually render the scene into render target, and that's how you would do it. And after we're done rendering, we have to set the render target to null to let TreeJS know that the next draw call will render on the screen itself instead of an off screen texture. Okay, before we can move on, we'll have to spend some time to discuss a new subject. We're going to use what's normally called a stencil buffer to create a mask that will only draw the galaxy scene inside the portal. Let's imagine that we have a data structure consisting of a grid with a cell for each pixel of your screen. Each cell, which corresponds to a pixel, can hold a value between 0 and 255, basically a byte's worth of data into it. And it would be really useful if we could write some values in this data structure such that on every pixel that the portal mask is on, which would be this mesh here, the cells of this grid can contain, for example, the value 1. The stencil buffer has this functionality built in, but we can do much more with it. For example, once we fill the stencil buffer with a bunch of ones where we have the portal mask, on our next draw call we can decide to discard all the pixels that end up in the cells with a zero and only draw on the ones where we have ones generating the picture here on the right. If this grid was actually up to scale, we could draw a bunch of ones on every pixel of the mesh of the portal mask and then end up with a galaxy scene that is only drawn inside the uh, boundaries of this mesh. To put this all in practice, we have to add a few new properties to the mask mesh material. First, we have to enable read and writes on the stencil buffer and we can do that in 3JS by specifying true on the stencil write property. Then we have to set a reference number which we're going to use to write some ones into the stencil buffer and also specify that we always want to draw those ones when the mesh is rendered. And finally we need to set the replace flag on the stencil z pass which basically means that when we pass both the stencil and the depth test and by the way we are always going to pass the stencil test then we want to replace the content of the stencil buffer, which at the beginning of every frame will be a bunch of zeros with ones, our reference numbers. I'll leave a link in the description that goes way more in depth into how to do stencil testing in OpenGL in case you want to know a bit more about the topic. But for the purpose of this project, that's almost all that we have to know to take advantage of the stencil buffer. All right, with the setup so far, we have a mesh, the mask mesh of the portal, which will draw a bunch of ones in our stencil buffer when it's rendered. But that's not enough since we also want to draw something in all the pixels that are marked as one in the stencil buffer. And the way that we'll make that happen is with a new component, which we're going to call fill quad. So the only purpose of this component is to create a plane geometry that fills the entire screen and that draws something on it. Now, the twist is that we're going to use the stencil buffer that we have computed previously to only draw on the cells 
that are marked as one. So even if this plane fills the entirety of the screen, the only region that will effectively be drawn uh, will be the one that is contained in the mask mesh of the portal. And setting up this tensile test for this material is going to be super easy. We have to enable read and writes, obviously. And then we also want to tell 3JS that we are only going to pass this tensile test for this material if the reference value is equal to the one that we are setting here. So we are going to pass to this component a mask ID property, which is going to be one, and it's going to be the reference value that will be used to test each of the fragments of this material to determine if they pass the stencil test. And as I said a million times, this mesh is only going to be drawn if the stencil test finds that the pixel that we are on has a stencil ref that is equal to mask ID, which is going to be one. We also have to prevent this material from writing to the depth buffer since this is a special type of geometry which will appear in front of everything else and we don't want the other objects of the scene to think that they are behind this plane. And finally, we have to create the material itself. Shader material is a 3JS construct that allows you to create your own materials by passing down the vertex and fragment shaders. We've never touched shaders in this channel until now and to be totally honest, this would be a really long discussion that I can't possibly do in a 10 minutes video. But what we're doing here is really simple. I'll try to briefly go over it by saying that vertex shaders are GPU programs that take all the vertices of every triangle that we want to draw on screen and then positions them in the right spot on the 3D world that we're trying to simulate. The shader here is simply positioning the plane in such a way that it will cover the entire screen and there's nothing else to it. Fragment shaders on the other end are GPU programs that will decide the color of each of the pixels that are part of the triangle that we want to draw. Now remember, what we're trying to do here is to render this texture, which will contain the galaxy scene, into this plane that covers the entire screen. To use textures inside fragment shaders, we have to create uniforms, which we can later access with the texture2d function and here I'm just manipulating the color of the texture before sending it off to be drawn on screen. I'm sorry if this part sounds a bit confusing. Unfortunately, that's the maximum that I can do with a short video format, but I promise you don't have to know all the details of this material to use it in this project. There's one last step that we have to take care of. As soon as we receive the texture components from the portal object, that we have to assign it with this use effect hook. And believe it or not, we're done. You just have to import the fill quote component inside portal.jsx. You're going to pass the map texture and then the mask ID, which is going to be the same value that we're assigning in the stencil ref here. And we're good to go. That was long and painful. I know, I'm sorry about it, but look at that. This kind of effects isn't easy to do and the fact that we managed to do it with what two react components and barely 100 lines of code that's actually remarkable and i think that's it for this video hopefully it wasn't too difficult to follow i do want to mention that the dre library has a ready to use mass component which greatly simplifies the setup that i've used here but i wasn't able to use their mass component with objects occluding the mask like the tree here in front of the portal so I had to create like an entire setup on my own, but if you do find a way of using the already existing mass component, please let me know. Uh, hopefully we can save someone else the pain of understanding all the concepts of this video. And having said that, I hope you enjoyed our journey so far, and I hope to see you again on our next and last video for this project. Cheers!